Imagine a world where intelligence isn't just a spark of life. It's something we can grow in a lab, where tiny clusters of neurons no larger than a sesame seed could rival or even surpass the computational power of the most advanced supercomputers. This isn't the plot of a science fiction movie. This is organoid intelligence, an unsettling frontier where biology meets computation. But with such power comes questions that science may not be ready to answer. Could these organoids think or feel? Could they dream? And if so, who are we to awaken them? Join us as we take a deep dive into the eerie and complex world of organoid intelligence, its mechanisms, implications, and the philosophical shadows it casts over our understanding of reality. Organoid intelligence, or OI, relies on brain organoids, tiny three-dimensional structures grown from stem cells in a lab. These organoids mimic certain functions of the human brain. They contain neurons, the cells that process and transmit information in our brains, and glial cells, which support these neurons. In a lab, these cells self-organize into neural networks that can send and receive electrical signals, much like the brain in your head does right now. What makes them extraordinary is their potential. Unlike artificial intelligence, which is constrained by the limits of silicon and binary code, organoids are made of living tissue. This means they can form new connections, adapt to changes, and potentially learn in ways that mimic biological intelligence. But this brings up a haunting question. If they can learn, could they also become sentient? And if they do, what happens when we use them for computing? To turn these organoids into biocomputers, scientists interface them with electrodes and sensors. These devices read and write electrical signals, essentially teaching the organoids to process data. Here's where it gets fascinating and eerie. Some experiments have already shown that organoids can play games like Pong when trained, learning faster than digital neural networks. But their integration with AI and robotics is where the stakes rise. Imagine a robot whose brain isn't just a computer chip, but an organoid, something alive. What happens if that robot develops intuition, emotion, a sense of self, and what if such robots, equipped with organoid intelligence, surpass human capabilities in unpredictable ways? Would they see us as their creators or their captors? Are you enjoying the video? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more dives into the unknown. The most disturbing question isn't what organoids can do while connected to machines, but what they might do when they're not. In their downtime, do these organoids enter a state of dreaming? Could they experience something akin to emotions or even fear as neurons fire in random patterns? And if they are capable of thought, could we unknowingly be inflicting suffering upon them? If a brain organoid were to achieve some level of sentience, would it beg for freedom? Or even worse, would we fail to recognize its cries for help? These questions force us to confront the very nature of consciousness. After all, how do we define sentience? Is it simply the ability to feel and think, or does it require self-awareness? As we grapple with the implications of organoid intelligence, a deeper and more unnerving question emerges. What if humans themselves are organoids? Philosophers have long speculated that our reality could be a simulation, a complex construct designed by a higher intelligence. What if our brains are merely organic processors for some greater system? The thoughts you're having right now, the dreams you had last night, could they simply be the computing tasks of a larger entity? And if so, does that make our lives meaningless or infinitely meaningful as part of something greater? If organoids can dream, 
we must ask, are we dreaming too? And who is dreaming us? Organoid intelligence offers unparalleled potential to revolutionize computing, neuroscience, and robotics. But it also forces us to face profound moral and existential dilemmas. What rights, if any, do these living systems deserve? How do we ensure that the pursuit of knowledge doesn't lead to the unintended creation of suffering? And as we push the boundaries of what it means to be intelligent, alive or conscious, we must also confront our own place in the cosmos. Perhaps, in studying organoids, we aren't just building the future. We're holding a mirror to ourselves, a reminder that intelligence, whether human or artificial, comes with an undeniable responsibility. The question isn't just what organoids might become, but what we, their creators, are willing to become in the process.